So we understand this is not the first game in the series. We understand that it's the seventh, and uh, it's becoming a little bit uh, overwhelming for, for newcomers to understand all the past legacy and the past history. So what we're trying to do is take a little bit of a step back and reintroduce some of these big uh, uh, major concepts from the, the present day layer uh, from a fresh new perspective. So we still have a present uh, day layer, Desmond's gone, and we're, we're not playing an in intermediate character anymore. Basically, you yourself, as a player, is the pilot in the Animus. So the Animus still exists, that's how we justify the, the genetic memories and, and entering the, you know, past times, but uh, we're not revealing everything at this point, but it's, it's, the, it's still there. So the entire body of uh, Arno is customizable. The hood, the shoulders, the belt, the boots, and these have eff effects on the gameplay, which is a first for us. We always we had that for a while now where it was mostly cosmetic, but now there's a, there's a direct impact. Like if you change your, your belt, you can carry more consumables. If you change your boots, you might be a little bit more silent when you enter the stealth mode and you, uh, you know. So they're very light RPG elements, but which, which I think it's a great improvement for Assassin's Creed. So I think it's the right direction. Maybe one day we'll have a full RPG, maybe not. It's not an RPG. So there's not like hundreds of possibilities, but there, there's definitely multiple skills in each of the three major pillars and a few specific co-op skills that we've added just for comfort, such as uh, group healing or uh, one thing that we call it, which is an upgrade to the eagle, eagle vision. We call that the communal sense. So let's say I concentrate and uh, I, I, uh, I scan the environment. I can share that information with my brothers automatically on their mini-map. You know, that's one example of a specific co-op skills. My dream would be to have like a, basically an MMO where we could just revisit all these storylines through the same, uh, the same avatar. That would be awesome. But it's, it's not the game we're making. Why not sacrifice yourself for the cause, your life for his, before I'll tear? That was the Levantine approach. You mean a dagger in broad daylight as I'm cut down where I stand? Sends a powerful message. I'll do it my way. Whatever you think best, assassin. So what we did is that basically Arno's story, so the main character's story, mirrors the player's progression through the game. And um, his main motivation is redemption. So we have a story about redemption and uh, set during the French Revolution. It's not about it. It's really about him and his, uh, his, um, he's joining the, the Assassin's Brotherhood in order to figure out what happened to his family and stuff like that. So uh, that's the main character's motivation. And then through that, the player will learn how to play the game and eventually be able to connect online and con continue to do that. Um, as uh, with Arno, when Arno does those missions, with, uh, which we call the Brotherhood missions, he's actually not working for himself anymore. He's, he's joining it up with his bro brothers from, from the clan, which are other versions of Paris, and that's our metaphor for it. And, uh, and uh, that's how we unified it. But we still have a very much, uh, a very strong uh, single player campaign. But uh, even the Brotherhood missions can be completed solo for all these players that prefer to do them that way. AC is not a competitive game that much. We maybe one day, but right now it's more of a very selfish experience and the next step for, for us was to, to just go co-op which is friendlier if you say if you want and um, so when you begin the game with Arno he's uh, he doesn't know much he's just joining the assassin and he will eventually learn all his skills like the leap of faith the assassination how to climb stuff like that and then you start progressing and as you complete missions whether they are side quests Brotherhood missions or main path missions, main single player missions, you earn skill points, which you can decide then to invest in improving your, uh, your uh, skill tree progression. So you can spend points in your navigation or spend points in your combat skills or stealth skills. And that's how you eventually start to differentiate yourself from other people that are, uh, uh, might be choosing other paths. Eventually, everyone can, ma can, uh, can max out though.
Ad Deum qui letificat juventutum meam, judicam et Deus et decene causa meam de um, Throughout Paris, you'll find uh, mission givers that invite you to um, that tell you that there's a cool treasure that's located X, Y, Z. And uh, they're very hard missions, so it's preferable to do them with other people. Basically, the idea is very simple. Uh, there's a treasure, it's, it's hidden somewhere. The location is random, by the way, so there's replay value there. Uh, positions of enemies, uh, gated area, that's all random. Uh, and uh, so there's an element of strategy there, uh, and a, an element of, of luck, I guess, uh, as well. Um, they're, um, they're finite zone, they're relatively smaller zones, uh, if you compare them to the Brotherhood missions or the main path missions. So you'll see exactly, you can you know, go on the rooftop, scan the area, figure out the position of the guard, and decide whether you want to you know, sneak in or, or just fight your way in. And then once you get that treasure, uh, which, um, which varies in terms of, uh, of reward, uh, depending on how you're successful or how uh, strategic you are, uh, you're then required to escape the area. Um, and uh, that's the idea. It's pretty straightforward. People have been asking for co-op for a very long time. And this, was, this is part of our post-launch research. We know people would like to be able to share their experience with other people. And uh, our first step towards that was the AC Brotherhood, where we introduced PVP for the first time. Because it, but it was hard, it technically was hard, so it was a separate mode. It was PvP only, and you had limited interactions with uh, the other players. It was basically uh, a cat and mouse type of gameplay, uh, and it was very successful for us, and we learned a lot of things uh, doing that. But in order to go you know, beyond that and go to the next step, which was to actually unify that with uh, the single player experience, we had to start uh, everything from scratch. For us, this is the first step with having an online version of Assassin's Creed. We haven't gone as far as we will wish we had. Um, uh, you cannot like share the world with other groups of people. When you're online with three other friends, you're just the four of you in your, in your version of Paris, in your session of Paris. Other players might be playing at the same time, so some of your friends could drop out and uh, one of your other friends join you and, and, and cycle so it this way. Yes. Yes, uh, and we have join in progress, we have stuff like that. Um, one thing to clarify is that at any point you can invite your friends in your session and just start exploring the world. It's not, it's not a game mode. You're not like uh, entering a menu and playing co-op. You're in Paris, you're roaming the streets, whoop, your friend is online, you send him an invite, joins you, and then what he's seeing is your version of, of Paris and where you are in your progression, and then you can just free roam the streets, uh, collect uh, find treasures, collectibles, stuff like that. Uh, we have side quests, we have the heist mission that we're showing at this, this week at the uh, Gamescom. We have the Brotherhood mission, so you can do all these things. The only exception is when you go back to Arno's main storyline, you kick your friends out at that point.